Hello world, my name is Shelly Hokinson and this is episode 01 of 2022 of Uncommonly Beautiful, a podcast about creating beauty from the inside, personal development, productivity, mindset, positive thinking, life hacks, efficiency, you name it, that's the kind of stuff we talk about here. And today I'm going to kick off the new year, yes, in February, because if Let's, how many of you are like me, where New Year's comes along, the holiday season is incredibly busy and sometimes overwhelming, especially the last couple of years, sometimes stressful, sometimes you've got a whole lot going on and not enough time to do it all. The concept of making resolutions for New Year's, I used to do it when I was younger, I don't really do it as an adult. However, I do use the turning of the new year as a time to reflect on my goals. I just don't do it on January 1st because that time of the year is such a whirlwind and it is so hard to focus and think about really what I want. It's hard to reflect. It's hard to get a big picture when your mind is in 5,000 different places. So I usually don't get around to my new year sort of analysis, reflection, and goal setting until February. Here we are. It's February. And finally, my mind has had a chance to sort of settle into place and think about what I've achieved in the past year, what I want to achieve in the future, and how I'm going to get there. Now, one thing I want to talk about today is time blocking. This is something I experimented with in the second half of 2021. I gave it a solid three months of doing it the way I had originally planned and the way a lot of the time blocking tutorials and whatnot recommend. I came to some conclusions, I modified my plan, and I very strictly stuck to it for the rest of the year. I need to get back into sticking to it as well as I did, but several things have come through and become a part of my everyday routine from that experiment. So I'm gonna talk you through what it is, what is time blocking, what I did, what I liked, what I didn't like, and what I'm doing now. So if you haven't heard of time blocking, it's essentially the very specific and intentional scheduling of your time. Not just putting big events on your calendar, but putting time blocks for everything on your calendar. I find that this is very handy for the perfectionist types because if you're the kind of person that gets caught up in working on something longer than you intended to because you have to just get get it perfect and you, you can't stop working on it until it's perfect, Perfectionist types usually also like to live within their structures and if you have a set amount of time and you're going to stop working on that thing at that time, now you've got a reason to stop and you don't have to keep pushing until the thing is perfect. Because especially with creative things, it's never going to be perfect. You're never going to be perfectly satisfied. There's always something you could change. So time blocking is going to give you a reason to stop striving for those little extra bits that that just aren't going to be productive in the way you use your time. It also allows you to prioritize the tasks that you need to complete ahead of time in a very methodical way. Like you have thought through this, you made decisions on what's most important, what is second most important, what is third most important. And when you've already done your prioritizing, you are less likely to fall into the traps of having something spring up and needing to respond on the fly as to where that fits in your priority. And a lot of times, at least if you're like me, something that pops up out of the blue is going to take priority just because it's in front of me, it's right here, it's right now, and I can I can deal with it now. But it might not be more important than other tasks that I had already thought through the priorities of. So when you block out your time, you pre-decide your priorities, and that makes it easier to then compare anything that pops up to the existing schedule of priorities that you've made and fit it in where it belongs instead of feeling like you have to deal with it right now just because it's right here. It also eliminates, and this is probably my favorite part, it eliminates the spiraling time suck of things like email. Are you a person that leaves multiple tabs up in your browser if you work at your computer 
you've got your email up, maybe you have your favorite messenger up, maybe your company uses Trello or Teams or some other tool to maintain constant communication with each other. Here's the thing, and I hate that this is true because I claimed to be a master multitasker for many, 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 many years. The reality is multitasking decreases our efficiency, it decreases our productivity, it decreases the depth of focus that we can get when we are working on any one particular task. It's not good. And if you keep your email up all the time, all day long, and you're checking it every half hour, 45 minutes, every hour, if you see those little notifications pop up, same with messaging, you get distracted from whatever you were doing. And then we're back into the trouble of random things popping up that really aren't priorities, but you feel the need to handle them now because it's right in front of you. You get an email for someone that wants to confirm that you're free next Wednesday for a meeting. Well, does that need to happen right this second? No, it doesn't. But when you get interrupted and you see it and now you feel like you need to address it, I don't know. Am I speaking to anyone's heart? Because this is how <laughs> the story of my life goes. And so what you do when you're time blocking is you designate, I do twice a day because I do feel like once a day is not enough, but I will designate 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the late afternoon to check my work email. That is the only time I check my email. I, <laughs> I fail at this constantly. I check my email all day, but I do it less now. I'm getting better. I am getting better. Put your email and tasks like that into specific blocks of time in your day and don't touch them otherwise. Don't keep your email tab open all day long. Don't keep your messages open all day long. When you are working on a time block and you have a task at hand, work on that task at hand. Do not be distracted by the other things. You're going to get farther and more accomplished on that task at hand when you devote pure focus to it and then it's going to be done and you can do the other tasks instead of dragging them all out and introducing the potential for errors for just the multitasking. Don't do it. Don't multitask. Try to focus. All right, let's check my notes here. So here are the things that are kind of the non-negotiable items that need to be in my daily schedule that I initially set up as time blocks. Number one, commuting to work, which was a new one because I worked from home for a year and a half. So I had to get back into the routine of the commute, which I have to give myself at least 45 minutes each way, not because it takes that long to drive there, but between driving, finding a parking spot on campus, and then walking across campus to my building, it does take that long. So I need to schedule my commute. I need email and grading to be non-negotiables in my routine. I have my YouTube business, so that's filming YouTube videos, editing YouTube videos, replying to comments, posting social media for my videos, so all of the production involved with my YouTube business. Then I have my dry nail polish business, so that is, again, more social media and order fulfillment, and I do vendor events where I'm bringing product and selling it. Then I've got my new soap business. So I do handcrafted soaps with a business partner. I've got to make soap, I need to cut soap, I need to wrap soap, I need to run the website, and we run the social media for that as well. Then for my teaching job, my day job, I have office hours that are non-negotiable that I have to be available to students. I have classes that are non-negotiable. I have to attend my classes and teach them. I have meetings that I have to participate in that are part of my service obligations. And then I have other things, but those are the non-negotiables. Those are the daily things that have to be in my world every single week. So, Here's what I learned. I made specific blocks of time for every one of those things in my one week calendar. Not all of them happened every single day. For example, YouTube filming, I usually have to do two to three days a week, not every single day. Same with editing. So they don't all have to happen daily, but I, I kind of broke it into a single week. I did my time blocking for a week-long period. The first lesson I learned is 
I don't like being told what to do and when to do it, even if I'm telling myself. <laughs> It was a little too restrictive to me. So for example, I had Friday late mornings as my YouTube filming slash editing time block. And what if I wasn't in the mood to do it on Friday? Now, part of me ends up regretting less structure because if I'm not in the mood to do it, I don't do it, and then I'm behind the eight ball and I have to do it some other time and I might not have time to do it. And so that's where I need to get a little bit better at accepting my time blocks and just dealing with it. But maybe I don't need to micromanage my time blocks quite to this extent. This is probably why I thrive in my career, which allows my schedule to change every four months and you know, with the semesters, I, I teach at James Madison University. If you're not familiar, I am in the School of Media Arts and Design. And the structure of just having classes and meetings and office hours to work around, and then the rest of the time is mine to schedule and do whenever I like, I, I thrive in that environment. So I don't necessarily like micromanaging my time to a very granular degree. If you read up on some of the super, super high level business people, CEOs, whatnot, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, Elon Musk and, and all Jeff Bezos, all those kind of people, they have time blocking down to five minute increments of their day. That's super micromanaged, but that's how they get as much done in a day as they do. I, I'm not that kind of person, nor do I have that many things to have to micromanage to that level. But I did find that even defining these very specific blocks of time was a little too much. To me, it kind of came down to, I would rather schedule this block of time, I will work on one of my businesses. This block of time, I will work on my JMU work. This block of time, you know, where it's a little bit more broad for me to decide what I feel like doing or what the priority is, but those blocks are specifically meant for work. So that ended up being better for me. I do, however, really like having things like my commute visibly scheduled in my calendar. I never used to do that. And I would just look at, well, my class starts at one. That means I have to leave by like 1215 if I want to get there on time. And I would just do that in my head every time I looked at my calendar. But this is something I learned through my, my user experience design that I do professionally is this concept of don't make me think. And when I realized that every time I looked at my calendar, I had to think, all right, what time do I need to leave to get there on time? That was just an extra set of mental energy that there really was no point in calculating and wasting that energy because it was the same every time, but I just couldn't remember because I didn't see it input in my calendar as a specific time every day. So now I actually put commute into my daily calendar. The app that I pull up on my calendar has commute in there and I don't have to think about it anymore. It's just built right in. It's, it's there, I see it, I don't have to think. So it saves a little bit of mental energy there as well. It also gives me a visualization of, okay, that's where I'm going to insert my personal development, my podcast listening, listening to audiobooks. I do a lot of that during my drive while I'm commuting. So it gave me a way to visualize when those activities are going to happen in my daily life. So that was awesome. That was a huge change for me and it was great. The one thing this made me do or made me better at is setting limits on my time, especially for those time sucking activities. One thing I'm experimenting with this semester is not checking work email over the weekends. Now I still do check it for student responses. Like you know, if students are having trouble with something they're about to submit that's gonna be due on Sunday, I will check for those. But I am not gonna be responding to emails about meetings, email, anything else really. If it's not my students, I'm not reading it. Not till Monday. That can wait till Monday. And it's taken this like massive stress lift off of my mind and that's just taking weekends somewhat to myself. I do still have to work on the weekends, not only with my businesses, but with JMU because 
for example, I have my student homework due dates on Sunday nights. So yes, I, but I do that myself. Like I, I put that on myself and that's how I like to work. I don't mind working at home. I don't like having to take work home with me. I just need to learn to set better boundaries between my personal life and my work life. And this is really helping me to do that. The email, sticking it into two time slots in the day and that's it, has been massively helpful because even though I do break that rule, quite often I find that having it as a rule makes me think, it, it gives me permission to not get hung up on email all day long. It gives me permission to say, I will check that at four o'clock. I'm not checking it now because I'm doing something else right now. So some for some reason, having that permission and having that structure helps me to rationalize that it's okay to not be on call 24 seven via email. So that has been awesome. So my modified version of this really is, I schedule my commute and my meetings, my office work, my classes, and then for my businesses, I basically just make time blocks of business work. I don't specify that this time has to be YouTube, this time has to be making soap, this time has to be social media, this time has to be replying to comments. I don't break it down to that granular of a level anymore. I just have, you know, side business work time, JMU work time, my commute is in there, and it has been working very, very well for me. Have you guys tried anything with time blocking? Let me know. I would love to hear what works for you. Here are a couple of the tools that I've been using. I'm not affiliated with either of these apps or websites, but I used them and I found them very helpful. So the, when I first started trying this out, I used worksheets from the Hey Donna website. She has a Time Blocking 101 series of printable worksheets, and I found it very handy to scribble out my schedule, look at it on paper, crumple it up, start all over, try it again, and it really helped me to sort through what I was trying to schedule and what needed to go where and what my priorities were. The other thing is an app, and it is a fantastic app. It's the Todoist, T-O-D-O-I-S-T, Todoist. I hope you can <laughs> hear me pronouncing it. It's a time blocking app. It's kind of a scheduling app, but it's got tons of flexibility for no matter how granular or how broad you want to categorize or block your time, you can do every kind of organizational content to your calendar as you want. You can block it out really granular, granularly. You can label things with colors. You can do all kinds of ways to organize your time and it's very, very flexible and it's very handy. It's very easy to use. It's very easy to read and it has been my favorite in terms of digital time blocking. I will say I also have my main time blocks in my Google Calendar. So when I'm, when I'm not putting, I don't put all of my individual tasks for the day into my Google Calendar. That's what I use the Todoist app for. But my Google Calendar has the main blocks and then I use Todoist to kind of get more specific with what I'm gonna do in each one of those blocks each particular day or week. And they've been very, very handy for me. I would love to hear what you guys do for time management and any tips that you've got. Please feel free to share. If you are enjoying this podcast and you would like me to keep making it, please leave a review on the platform of your choice. I greatly appreciate it. And if you feel like supporting any of my businesses, you can check out Geek Out of Water Nails. That is my dry nail polish business. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook, or you can check my YouTube channel, Geek Out of Water. That is my beauty and skincare, kind of the beauty on the outside version of the content that I create, specializing in foundation reviews. And you can check out my handcrafted soap business at qcsoap.com. My friend Judy and I are the quirky creators and I appreciate your support with all of my business ventures. As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to create your own beauty with me. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.